Let me ask you a question. Are you an educational leader who's looking to unlock the full potential of your educators and create a thriving environment for your scholars? Well, on today's episode, we're going to move into session two of our three-part series on the must-dos of educational leadership with a focus on professional development. So stick around and watch this to the end so you can get actionable tips that will create that environment where you are thriving through continuous professional learning and growth. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everyone, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes. All right, so welcome in to session two of our three-part series on the must-dos of educational leadership. And today's focus is going to be on professional development, creating that, that environment of just continuous learning, continual professional development and growth for your staff, for the betterment and for the growth and for the academic achievement of your scholars. So we're going to give you three strategies that are going to help you just really deeply embed what the importance of professional growth and development is, and then specific actionable tips that you can use as a school leader to help to foster and create that environment for your staff. Remember, it's all about benefiting your students and your scholars and taking them to the next level of their academic performance and achievement. And by empowering our staff with the tools, with the knowledge, the skills, and the expertise to be able to provide that quality environment for our students, that's exactly a core tenet of effective leadership. So let's jump right in with strategy number one. All right, let's start with strategy number one. And strategy number one is all about building a culture of lifelong learning. And when we think about building a culture of lifelong learning, it's really kind of three big ideas that we want to talk about. So first we want to talk about how do you foster a growth mindset? How do we shift in our minds? How do we look now at challenges as opportunities as opposed to challenges being barriers and obstacles? Well, if we shift our thinking to that of a growth mindset, well, there's always an opportunity. There's always an opportunity to build. There's always an opportunity to stretch the success just around the corner. If we think through that positive mindset and we think about how do we have that growth mindset, then we can create an opportunity to be a lifelong learner. Secondly, how do we encourage collaboration and sharing in a professional environment like a school with lots of highly educated, highly experienced people? the best opportunities, the best learning, the best solutions to problems emerge when you get people together who are thinking together, talking together, sharing, collaborating, and looking at a problem from all of the different angles and bringing all of our respective assets and tools to the conversation. So we as leaders, we want to create an environment that's rich in collaboration, where sharing is recognized, it's expected, and it is absolutely encouraged. And then thirdly, we really want to talk about how do we celebrate success and progress? We're on this journey, ever moving forward, one foot in front of the other, getting a little bit better today than we were yesterday, getting a little bit better tomorrow than we were today. And so how do we pause, reflect, recognize, and celebrate our progress? We as leaders can create that where we encourage and intentionally talk to people about how do you recognize your progress? How do we set up different protocols, different procedures where we can stop and pause and we can actually take stock of the progress and we can actually celebrate those incremental achievements. But this is all around when we create this mindset around lifelong learning, we want to put these places, we want to put these pieces in place, excuse me, we want to make sure that these things are being created and we as leaders have the opportunity to develop exactly that type of environment. And so a concrete strategy around lifelong learning is something that is not new and is not different, but it is 
absolutely unquestionably a best practice. And that is the development of a professional learning community, not in name only, but in practice. And so a framework, things that you have to have, you have to have common language. You have to have common goals. You've got to intentionally set up time with meetings and with schedules. You've got to carve out intentional time. It's got to be frequent. There's got to be some sort of cadence, but setting up a framework where you have a true and authentic professional learning community that we all share in, that we all are accountable to. And then we all know that when we go to this place to learn together, that is going to be a rich conversation and I'm going to derive a significant amount of benefit. So when you bring this forward as a part of your strategy to build continuous professional learning and growth, develop PLCs as a best practice and make sure that there's dedicated time. There is a rigorous framework around what our meetings are, when our meetings will happen, what the expectations are for the actual deliverables that come out of that meeting, how we will progress monitor, what happens in those meetings, and how we will report out and be accountable to the larger organization, to the rest of the school site, to the rest of the school community around what are we learning? What are we going to do better and different as a result of collaborating and putting ourselves in this environment? And when we have that rich environment of a professional learning community going on, then we circle back to the growth mindset. We circle back to the collaboration and the sharing, and we circle back to making sure that we recognize and celebrate that progress. And that's strategy number one. All right, let's talk about strategy number two. And strategy number two is all about providing access to quality resources and training. We have to be mindful and we have to also be curious around making sure that our staff, our faculty, that they have what they need and not assuming that we know what they need. And so to make sure that we're providing that and we're creating that environment where we have access to those quality resources and trainings, there are really three things that we wanna look at. So the very first thing is we wanna make sure that we're curating high quality educational materials. Now, how do we do that? Again, We've got to ask our teachers. They are the experts. They are looking at this information. They're reviewing, they're researching. They're doing this on a daily basis, specifically to their content areas, specifically to their grade levels, specifically thinking through the lens of what they need for their scholars right now today, which could be very different than what they need for their scholars for next year. Different group, different group of scholars, different set of issues, different set of challenges, different set of opportunities for success. But what do they need right now? And then how do we help to curate that? How do we find and then cultivate and gather all of that information to make sure that it's accessible for them? So we can create the opportunity to be able to grab all that information, but we wanna leverage their knowledge and expertise in order to know what those resources are. Additionally, we wanna leverage technology for this professional growth and this development. Technology is driving this conversation. We have access to more information. We have access to more data. We have access to more resources. Leverage the technology in order to be able to determine what is absolutely the best. And then leverage that technology in order to, to provide high quality, engaging and interactive professional learning opportunities. Our staff will clearly articulate to us what they want and what they need. Now let's use the power and the opportunities and the platforms that are available through technology to deliver that, to provide that, and then make it accessible to them continuously. And then thirdly, we have to think about alignment. How do we align our professional development with our school goals? Well, first and foremost, what are your school goals and how are you developing those in collaboration and in consultation with your team. Because now once we've articulated what those goals are gonna be, now we can think about how do we align that? How do we now align the training? How do we align the resources? How do we align the conferences and maybe the travel and the opportunities that people have to go outside of the organization and learn about those things? 
And then how do we circle that back to the resource allocation, meaning how do we align the budget to that? And as school leaders, we're thinking through all of those different lenses. Thinking through how do we align and then how do we now really get clear on what are the two to three things that are going to help us really move towards achieving that goal. And then what is the professional development? What is the technology platform? And how do we continually align that? So a concrete strategy that you could use specifically in this regard is the develop is the development of customized professional development. And this again is where the ability to leverage the knowledge and expertise of your staff around what they feel is going to most benefit and most support their needs. Couple that with leveraging technology. And then thirdly, aligning it to your school based goals, having customized professional development for each of your staff members is easier when you're listening to what they're asking for and you're leveraging technology. And I think about the opportunity that platforms like Microsoft's Copilot, platforms like OpenAI's ChatGPT, it gives us the opportunity to drop all that information in and literally curate, develop, and produce a customized professional development plan for every single one of our staff members based on what they need and based on what they want and based on what we can afford budgetarily and then aligning that back to the school PD goals. So it is in a place in a space five to 10 years ago before all of the technology advances related to AI, it would have been a lot more time consuming and a lot more tedious to be able to do this. But I truly believe if you wanna take your school site and your school organization, your district to the next level, it would be thinking about how do you customize professional development and tailor make it to the specific needs of each and every one of your staff members. Think about that leverage technology to do that and that's gonna move you to the next level and that's strategy number two. All right, before we move to strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what are one or two strategies that you will incorporate to create this continuous professional growth and development within your school site or within your school organization? Share that with us in the comments below and let's move to strategy number three. All right, strategy number three is all about creating incentives and support structures for your staff. This is an important piece and sometimes it can be forgotten and can be dismissed as not important. But I would actually argue that it is extremely important to make sure that we are providing the right supports, but also the right incentives. And I'm not talking about monetary incentives, but I'm just talking about the opportunity for people to be incentivized and recognized and celebrated for the work that they do because we know that educators spend hours and hours and hours of time preparing, thinking through, researching, building, learning opportunities and learning experiences. They cultivate their craft constantly, continuously. So we wanna think about as leaders, how do we create, how do we support that? How are we there for our staffs when they need us to be, to lift them up, to pick them up, to elevate them? Let's talk about three strategies and three ways that we could do that. So the very first one is offering recognitions and rewards. And again, we're not talking about monetary, but just the opportunity to recognize the good works of people. And a really powerful way that we can do that is simply to call out when there is success happening in the classroom, in a department, in a grade level, across a specific facet of the campus, finding a way in faculty meetings, in bulletins, in newsletters, calling that out, reinforcing that that progress and that success is going to be recognized, cultivates an environment where more people will do and search out ways to really push the envelope to be successful. It's just rising tides lifts all boats. And so finding ways to do that is important. Another one is providing time and resources. Time is precious. And giving our teachers the ability to have some time and to have some resources. And that time could be, it can manifest itself as trying to create opportunities for professional development and collaboration time. If there are opportunities 
to carve out some space and a place to have a professional learning day, building that into your academic calendar, having the opportunity to have professional development opportunities that are in and around the district or outside of the district, leveraging resources, allocating the budget that would allow for those things to happen. Because when people have the opportunity to have time and resources, it gives them more of the opportunity to build more, to think more, to leverage all of their experience and knowledge to come up with even better plans, better lessons, better units, better assessments, better opportunities to collaborate, more fruitful and thoughtful discussions that creates that learning environment, that really rich professional growth environment for all of our staff members thinking about how do you leverage and create that as well as a school leader and then also building that supportive environment do you, are you taking time to really check in and connect with what are those individual needs what are those grade level leads what are those department level needs are you showing up at your school sites are you showing up within your departments are you showing up and making sure that you have a, a, at least a, a thumb on the pulse of what is happening so you can ask a critical, a critically important question. And it's a very simple question. You show up and you simply ask, what else do you need? How else can we help? What other resources, supports, and items or experiences do you need? Because when we ask that question, we are inviting them to share with us what they need. And then we have the opportunity to really fill that gap, connect those dots, and then provide those resources that will make their jobs that much easier, that much more engaging, that much more fulfilling. So we run to think about how do we create these types of opportunities? And I think a concrete strategy that I have been deeply committed to for many, many years and that is find ways to build mentorship opportunities, mentorship frameworks. You as a school leader may not be able to mentor every single person, not deeply at least, but maybe at least incrementally, but creating other opportunities for mentors, identifying new teachers and mentoring them up with more veteran teachers, identifying veteran teachers who are looking to maybe break through on some of the new or different things that our newer teachers are coming in the door with, but creating buddy systems and mentoring programs and mentoring frameworks where there can be a mutual sharing and exchanging of ideas that will help our staff, our faculty be that much better at what they do. Again, we create the opportunity to build those types of mentoring programs. So newer and less experienced teachers, experienced and more experienced teachers, whatever that looks like, whatever makes most sense to be able to create a rich, thriving conversational environment where there's a, a sharing of ideas and a sharing of opportunities is exactly what you wanna do within your school site, within your school organization. This is that rich professional environment that every, every educator really, really wants to be immersed in because we all are on a path, we're all learning, we're all growing. That's super, super critically important for all of us. I know it, it continues to be for me as a superintendent where I wanna learn as much as I can. I wanna continue to be a lifelong learner. I think we, as leaders, need to model that as much as, pro, as, as, much as possible. So as we move forward, again, the must do's, the must do's in educational leadership, continuous professional learning, professional development, giving those opportunities for our staff is an absolute critically important leadership capacity and trait. So think about these strategies, incorporate them into your work. And as you wanna learn more about what you must do as an educational leader, you can again, check out this video here. It's gonna give you more information about this overall process. And don't forget to also tune in next week because next week we're gonna finish with series, with part three of this three-part series on the must-dos of educational leadership. Don't forget to check the description below for information on more resources about mentoring, our weekly newsletter, all around educational leadership and educational tips. And don't forget to check out this next video. We'll see you on the next one. Be well, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next.
episode. Thanks, everyone.